What's up guys, Steel Frodo here and welcome back to one of my tech videos. So this time it's a little bit different. So a couple people have asked me to talk about the build that I use on a daily basis for editing. Well, I could do that, but I figured I'd make it a little bit more interesting. So this is my very first computer. And just for kicks, I'm gonna be comparing it to my new one. Listen to that baby purr. So what does this arthritic dinosaur have to offer under the hood? Well, it is a Dell Dimension 2400, so originally it would have come with Windows XP, and inside it does have the Pentium 4 processor as opposed to a Pentium D, which does give it some merit. I also threw out the 80GB IDE hard drive in favor of a 200GB hard drive, and I fully upgraded the processor to the 3.6GHz hyper-threading model and gave it two full gigabytes of RAM. Impressive, right? And to put more lipstick on this pig, I gave it a GT9400 from NVIDIA with one whole gig of DDR2 memory. Moving around to the back, we've got a power supply of unknown origin, two PS2 ports for mouse and keyboard, serial printer, VGA, three audio ports, four USBs, an Ethernet jack, DVI-N, VGA, and an S-Video port. And if you're not sure what some of those ports are, go ask your parents. And here's something else. I'm sure most of you are familiar with what a disk drive is, but below it is a floppy drive. Ask your parents. Now, when it came to getting this thing started again, it really didn't take much effort. Uh, I plugged it in and it actually fired right up. Obviously, the 1080p display was a little bit of an issue. And also, remember when I said that this originally came with Windows XP? Well, thanks to the graphics card update, the updated processor, the maxed out memory, and the larger hard drive, I was actually able to get Windows 7 Pro to install on it. I was even able to run Windows 8's beta for a little while, which is what the consumer preview was, but once Windows 8 went official, they stopped supporting this computer. Now what you're about to see is the reason why every single PC manufacturer in the world moved over to SATA drives once they were available. IDE drives are just so slow. Oh my goodness, I could probably go upstairs, make a sandwich, come back down, and still have time to wait for the lock screen to show up with the speed that this drive runs at. So I'm just gonna jump over to, well, when the lock screen pops up. And boom. Oh, wait, crap. Come on, yes, all right, cool. So now let's uh, log in and see what we've got. And welcome everyone to the first computer. It's not really my first computer. I built my first computer from scrap parts, but it's the first actual branded computer that I ever owned. And I put a lot of work into it. So here we go, ignore that. So for a true apples to apples comparison, I figured that on this PC and on my new PC, I would play the two games that I played the most when this was my main rig. Whenever it loads. Come on. There we go. Yes, so for the comparison, we'll be doing Painkiller and Minecraft and seeing who comes out on top. Even though I'm pretty sure we all know who's coming out on top. Just saying. So for the test with Painkiller, I'm gonna be playing the first level of the game on Insomnia and just seeing how the computer performs. So let's get started. Hmm. Oh, whoa, that actually, oh, uh, wait, maybe not. Nope, it's gonna take some time. I'll be back. All right, we're almost done. We're about ready to load into the game and I can start talking about how the game performs. Come on. Uh, oh, you're so close. Thank you. All right, so we hop into Painkiller and right off the bat, you'll notice that it's a little jumpy. The performance on this computer is actually so bad that when you're gaming, you can't even run screen capture software. That is how underpowered this machine is and just, oh god. After getting so used to playing games at like 60 FPS or higher, this is just inexcusable. I was actually tempted at one point to kind of make the excuse of saying, oh no, it's an older computer and it would have never been playing games like this because it was just never designed for it, but this was a game that was actually out and had been out well before this computer was launched. So the fact that it runs this poorly on a machine with this many upgrades, that's actually kind of inexcusable on the computer's part and also kind of inexcusable on my part. Looking back, I can't believe that I was actually gaming on this in any degree. It's just that bad. Another really easy way to see the performance issues with this is just anything that has to use physics, when it kicks in, you can just see the frame rate dropping. I mean, look at this. It's ridiculous. You can literally watch the frame rate go down and now it's back. Like, it's that bad. All right, and with it all wrapped up now, we can see I didn't do too bad. I killed all the enemies and I collected 99, oh, I almost got 100 souls. 
But uh, yeah, overall not too bad. I guess I reverted back to the way I used to play. So I guess that's a good thing. And speaking of used to, oh god, used to play, we're in Minecraft now, and this was just the version of Minecraft that I had installed on the computer when I, you know, took it off the wall and mothballed it. So, uh, nothing fancy. In fact, this is turned way down. Uh, it's not the fancy graphics, it's the fast graphics. Uh, shadows are turned off, everything is turned as far down as possible, and as you can see up in the corner there, we're you know, getting 24, 22, 31, 30, uh, decent FPS now, now that the world's open and loaded, but god, it is so bad. Something else I noticed is that when there's a lot of blocks nearby, or a lot of interactive things, moving things, what have you, pretty much anything that isn't a flat surface, you can watch the frame rate just tank. Right there I hit 5, we're back up to 15, oh god, it's really bad. In fact, going through this house is one of the worst experiences, because... There's just nothing. It's not moving properly. It's so, so slow. And keep in mind, I'm not generating a new world. This isn't stuff I've never explored before. This is actually stuff that I've spent hours and hours playing. Like this game, this whole world that I'm playing in right now, these hours that I've spent in it, I can't believe that I did it. Like, look how poorly it's performing. It's choppy. The nether, I've been here before. This is all pre-generated. I'm not generating a new nether realm or anything like that. I just can't believe that I actually used to play this. Now, when it comes to oh, when it comes to distance stuff, look at it, it renders all right. Oh, oh, alrighty then. Okay, one last thing, and then I'm done picking on this computer. So watch when I open Minecraft. See how far up the processor spikes. And keep in mind, this is a hyper-threaded Pentium 4. This isn't like a dual core or anything like this. This is a single core with you know hyper-threading. So one core doing two tasks essentially, and it is. Pegged. Like, when it actually loads the game, look, 100%, and watch the clock. The second hand on the clock actually skips some seconds when it really, really gets into loading. Here we go. Like, eh, well, maybe not. Nope, it's gonna make a liar out of me. So. But, yeah, it's kind of ridiculous, this game. It, oh, man, it uses so much of the processor, it's not even funny. Alright, well, I've had my fill of picking on this machine that I used to think was decent, and, uh, looking back now, it's clearly not a gaming PC. But this is, so here we go. This is my current build, and I will start out by saying it's a monster. Starting at the bottom, we've got a Corsair CX750M modular 750 watt power supply powering an Intel 4770, 32 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM on a gigabyte board with a 140 millimeter radiator for liquid cooling. And moving forward and starting from the top, we have two SSDs, 240 gigs each, a three, a two, and four one terabyte hard drives for, you know, reasons. And of course we can't ignore the graphics card which is an EVGA GTX 970 for the win edition. This is the one with the really cool fan shroud where unless it gets you know under gaming load the fans don't come on so it pretty much operates in silence until then. Then moving around to the front we've got a front cover which will actually open up with a hinge to reveal some very very nice sound dampening foam for obvious reasons. And then in front of that is a flap that you can press and pop open which reveals two 140 millimeter fans protected by a dust flap. And that's pretty much all there is for the front. Moving up to the top, we've got a hard reset, a power on, headphone jack, microphone jack, two USB 3 ports, and two USB 2 ports. And moving around to the back, we have a lot of USB 3 ports. We also have an Ethernet jack, HDMI, PS2, we've got a DVI, VGA, a lot of audio jacks, and two Thunderbolt 2 ports. Yeah. And then below that, we've got our Wi-Fi card, as well as the ports coming out of the back of the graphics card. Two DVIs, an HDMI, and a display port. So let's fire this thing up. And part of the reason why I picked this case is because when I'm editing, the machine is nearly inaudible, which is awesome. And so, now that we've seen the other machine boot, let's see this one boot and, you know, figure out why SATA beat out IDE when it comes to hard drives. That's why. So now let's get into the pummeling. I mean, benchmark. So we're gonna load up Painkiller, do the exact same thing. And watch how fast this loads. Like, that's, and yeah, we're in the game now. So, yeah. And for a fair comparison, I had VSync off on the old computer, and so I turned VSync off on this as well. And yes, I know this is not really a fair comparison. This is a computer that was built in 2015, and upgraded throughout 2015 and 2016, so obviously it's going to be able to play a game that's this old. 
the point of this is the fact that I'm just trying to test out what games I used to play and see what the experience is now versus what the experience was then. That's kind of the idea of this exercise. Obviously I knew that it was going to destroy my old computer. I was just kind of curious as to how much. And of course, since this is a newer computer, I do have enough processor power left over to run things like, oh, other programs and overlays. The overlay I have here is EVGA Precision X, and uh, this kind of gives me a frame rate count as well as how much the graphics card's being used. And look at the frame rate! 178, 192? That's ridiculous! That's really, really good! So, no surprise, this thing runs painkiller like nobody's business. It's literally not even a challenge. The computer's barely breaking a sweat. But what about Minecraft? So to make this a little bit more of a <laughs> fair fight, I decided to have my PC load an entirely new world. And there you go. So even though Minecraft is a little more processor intensive than graphics card intensive, having an Intel Core i7 with four cores, hyper-threading per core, so eight total streams, that really tends to lean more favorably towards my newer PC anyway. I don't think the Dell really ever stood a chance. Now something I didn't know was that Minecraft apparently has a frame rate cap of 120 FPS. I mean, it didn't really matter, because I was pegged up against the frame rate cap the entire time, and on the other PC it never even came close, but yeah, didn't know that. Interesting. Now the last thing I'm going to show you all here in Windows is something that I can only run on this PC. I would have never been able to do it on the Dell, but this is a benchmark called Firestrike. For those of you who are familiar with performance PCs, gaming PCs, and just graphically demanding things, you'll know what this is. But for those of you who don't, this is a benchmark that pretty much pushes your graphics card to its limit. And in one test, to be fair, it does push your CPU to the limit but it's overall pretty insane. And so I'm just gonna run this here to show you guys what my PC in its configuration can do in this benchmark. The benchmark that I actually really wanted to show you guys is the Firestrike Combo Test. This is the last test that it runs and it puts particle effects, physics, the animation, tessellation, the whole nine yards to the pretty much absolute max. You can see that there's a lot going on in the background, there's reflections, there's particles, all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty nuts. And then of course, when it all wraps up, you get to see your result. And for the test that I ran for this video, I was able to pull in a 1055, which is pretty respectable for a GTX 970. I have been able to do better, but that was after hours of tweaking with overclocking, and I didn't want to waste time doing that. So there you go. This is a killer gaming PC, and that is everything that this thing has to offer in Windows. But this can actually run something other than Windows. Yeah. This computer is a Hackintosh as well. Now the question comes up quite a lot, why did I go with a Hackintosh instead of buying a Mac, or just building a PC and using Premiere? And the answer is actually pretty simple, upgradability and software. When it comes to software, especially editing software, Mac OS X destroys Windows. In Final Cut, one of my 25 minute videos takes somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 minutes to export. When I tried to do that in Adobe Premiere, the exact same video took almost 45 minutes to export. So that's a plus to the Mac side when it comes to software. And to be fair, when I learned how to edit for the first time, the first piece of software I used was Adobe Premiere. But then when I went to college and I used Final Cut for the first time, I was blown away with the performance, the ease of use, the speed, the whole nine yards. Plus, as you can see here, when I have it set up on my normal desk, not on my test bench, I can pretty much fly through most of my edits without any issues because I can save presets and I've got everything pretty much set to where I normally use it on a daily basis. However, PCs absolutely have the advantage when it comes to hardware, and that's why I went with a Hackintosh. I get the advantage of the hardware options with a PC, but the software of a Macintosh. I don't have an iMac where everything's sealed in, and I don't have a Mac Pro where the ECC RAM costs like $400. If I'm not happy with the graphics card, I can just go buy a compatible graphics card. If I don't have enough RAM, I can add more. I have 9 terabytes of hard drives and a processor that I'm planning to upgrade. You get where I'm going with this? I can do whatever I want with this and still have the advantage of having the software of a Mac. It's great. And that pretty much sums it up. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It felt a little weird making it because it felt like I was showing off, but I figured if you guys asked for it, you might enjoy it. And I actually ended up enjoying it quite a bit myself, pulling out the old PC and thrashing it and then comparing it to the new one. It was actually pretty funny. Also, I left a link down below to a website called PC Parts Picker where you can actually see all the components used in this build, including what you're seeing on my desk right now. Well, not the Xbox and the speaker, but everything else. The computer speakers, the mouse, the keyboard, the screens, the whole nine yards. So go check it out. 
And also make sure to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. It's at Frodo117. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you guys think and if you want me to do other videos like this. And other than that, I will see you all in the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one.